Welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. This is our Monday Thursday worship service. Our music will be played in the Taze style. You will hear these beautiful chants that came out of France. Um, this last chant, live in charity and steadfast love and God will dwell with you. This is an opportunity for us to uh, come alongside God, remembering Jesus as he entered the upper room and shared the Lord's Supper, uh, the Last Supper, with his disciples. We invite you this night, as you are watching, to please fill out your Connect With Us form. We would love to be uh, getting to know who you are and uh, willing to pray with you and grow in faith with you, and so we hope that you will let us uh, know your names. Also, please check our website for all the Easter uh, services. You will find a listing of all of our Easter services there on the website. This evening, we will be serving the Lord's Supper for local folks that can drive through, and so we want you to stay till the very end of worship before you come over so you can read, receive the instructions for how that will happen here at the, the church this evening. Again, we're so glad to be together in worship. Uh, we welcome those that might be here for the first time. I'm Janet Saubert, I'm one of the pastors here, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you two of our young adults who came to help lead in worship tonight. Hi, my name is Kayla Fayok. I've been a part of Grace for about eight years, I believe, and I'm very grateful to be here in worship with you tonight. Hi, my name's Amanda Lieber, and I am fairly new to Grace. I started attending online Bible studies and online worship about six months ago, and recently I've been attending worship in person, and I'm looking forward to getting more involved with Grace. Let us pray. Christ of glory and grace, we worship this night with gratitude and joy. For the love you share, we give thanks. For the lessons you teach, we offer you our lives in your ongoing mission. For the glory that shines through you, we open our hearts to give you praise, that you might shine through us. Guide us through our worship this night, remembering all that is good and true, all that is difficult and sad. As we share the meal you shared with your disciples, may we remember the grief that followed. Even as we mourn, we remember your promise to feast with us again in heavenly glory. Amen. Amen. And now please follow along with this beautiful Taze chant, Eat This Bread. The words will be on the screen, and we'd love for you to be singing at home.
Our scripture for tonight comes from 1 Corinthians. Hear now the word of the Lord. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thanks be to God. Amen. So on this holy night, let us lift up a prayer to the power of the Holy Spirit at work amongst us. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for these scriptures that witness to the love of Christ and all that he offered even as he was living out his purpose. And we thank you for all that you have given us to live in Christ. And so may these words tonight enter into our lives. May we come to know Christ more intimately, receiving the strength and love that he has to offer. It's in his name we pray. Amen. So think about the most memorable meal that you have enjoyed. Think about that for a minute. Was it an outdoor picnic with family and friends? Or could it have been one eaten alone, perhaps in silence? Perhaps it was a meal that warmed you on a cold winter night or refreshed you on a hot summer day. Maybe you remember the very first sip of water after having had surgery that began your journey to recovery. During this last year, perhaps our meal times were all the more significant, prepared quietly, using up our pantry items to avoid the grocery store, meals that were shared over Zoom, tasting better than we remembered, glad to have a seat at any old table, glad to be safe in our homes. Well, tonight, this meal, the Lord's Supper, is meant for our warmth, refreshment, and recovery. It is a meal that restores us to wholeness. It is not any old table. It is the table where Christ is the host. And at this table, there is always enough for everyone. It is a table that Jesus prepared, that Jesus set with the disciples during the Last Supper. These scriptures that Kayla read are vital because the church has used these very words for setting the table in every generation since Christ. At the church in Corinth, some folks were being left out of table fellowship. They were still working in the fields, providing for the sick, unable to come to worship, and arriving after all the food was gone. These words that were said first by Jesus and then repeated in this letter to the Corinthians by the Apostle Paul, do this in remembrance of me, make all the difference. This meal is not just for one, not just for a few, but it is a meal for all believers. It is a meal for the whole church. It is a meal that not only remembers, but reenacts the real presence of Christ. The real presence of Christ is at this table. This ordinary bread, the fruit of the vine, 
This ordinary meal is one that does make all the difference in our lives. During this last year, we have rarely been able to celebrate the Lord's Supper here at Grace. Perhaps we could have arranged to keep it amongst the few here who led worship. And theologically, it would have been appropriate. We could have received the Lord's Supper on behalf of the whole congregation. I am glad that we did not. I am glad that during this Holy Week, we get to remember together. We reenact the work of Christ in this meal. Because of this year, I think we know more about how our ordinary lives have been blessed and broken and shared. I think we know more about the subtle revealing of God's grace. I think we woke up to how God's creation provides an abundance for us physically, mentally, and spiritually. During this last year, we woke up to mercy and mystery. We grew in gladness and in gratitude, and not because things were easy and wonderful, but because we, in the midst of hardship, grief, and challenging circumstances, we felt and we saw the wonder of God's work in and through us. I think we can come to this table tonight with a renewed sense of our immeasurable worth. We come to the table together, now more assured and trusting that Christ alone gives us strength. And tonight we come hungry to receive these gifts. Christ, blessed, broken, body and blood given for us. This bled, bread, blessed and broken, is given to unify the church, thankful for the opportunity to be the body of Christ, and because of the cross, available to enter into another's suffering, not to take it away, but to accompany others as Christ accompanies us. This blood is offered to cleanse and redeem us into loving relationship with God and future service for another, a cup that is shared by all. This new covenant Jesus established in this meal means that God's grace cannot be earned or obtained through ritual or through obedience to the law. But this covenant, this new covenant that we enter in with God is through our hearts. Hearts alive. Hearts who know, intimately know, Christ's saving acts accomplished for us. Tonight, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And perhaps we might visualize ourselves as the original 12 around this table, recognizing ourselves amongst Andrew, James, and John, the salty fishermen who didn't have much hope, didn't have much more hope than dragging their nets through life. Or we might be like Peter tonight, at times brash and at times impulsive, and yet still chosen to be the rock of the church. Some of us come tonight like Bartholomew, who once asked, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Only later to be complimented by Jesus himself. Simon was known as the sword, the, the flaming one, a zealot, fierce, whose passion could only be tempered by Jesus' love. And we can all admit that we can be like Thomas at times. 
wanting to put our fingers in his side to see it, to believe it. Or Matthew, trying to squeeze every last drop into our business wallet. And Judas, the betrayer, well, deep down, we too know where we have betrayed the love of God, wanting to take care of things on our own rather than trusting in him. But these are Jesus' best friends, those who he chose to share his last supper with. And so here we are. The table is almost set, and we, we are all invited. We join together as one body at this table to enter into Christ's own, strengthened anew by his body and blood. Thanks be to God. Christ invites to this table all who love him, who desire to have a seat at this table, who repent of their sin and want to be given a piece of this presence, this grace. And so together, as is the tradition, we join in the great thanksgiving, acknowledging our sin and putting ourselves here to receive this grace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You spared your people with the blood of lambs smeared on their doorposts. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He is our Passover lamb. He was betrayed and handed over to the authorities. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night, this night, in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and said to his disciples, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has is died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here and those who are gathering with us. And pour out your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, for by showing love to one another, all will know we are his disciples. 
By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of God's children, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'll offer these instructions. The, the Lord's table is ready, and we are welcome and invited to receive. Here are the instructions for the drive through If you will come in through the top parking lot following the cones, there will be three stations at the circle, and we invite you to pull up. Keep your mask on as you roll down your windows. You will receive a piece of bread and a cup of juice. The cup will stay with you. After you've taken the Lord's Supper, the server will offer a short blessing, and you will leave by a different way, again, following the cones to Henley through the lower part of the parking lot. So we hope that um, you will find it easy to come in and receive this evening. We welcome you all. Our Good Friday service tomorrow is available all day long. Um, but it will premiere on Facebook Live at 7 o'clock, so we hope that you will come and hear the seven last words of Christ delivered by uh, several of your pastors here, both active and retired. Also on Good Friday, um, this earth, this bowl of earth that we have um, used as sacred space in our homes, we invite you to carry this bowl of earth out and return it to your lawn or garden uh, as a remembrance that you are called to continue to grow in Christ in the year ahead. And I leave you with this final word, that after this meal that Jesus shared with his disciples, he led the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he asked them to pray for him, and they fell asleep. Jesus was alone and in such anguish that drops of blood arrived on his brow. He prayed as a man who could feel pain, who would be hurt by betrayal, who would be scarred by the scourge, and would bleed when the nails were driven into his arms and legs. He prayed as a man who knew that if he followed God's will, he would be charged convicted, mocked, humiliated, abandoned, and nailed to a cross. Knowing all this full well, he prayed, not my will, but yours. Let us pray. Oh God, by the example of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, you taught us the greatness of your true humility, and call us to watch him in his passion. Give us grace to serve one another in all lowliness and to enter into the fellowship of his suffering in his name and for his sake. Amen. And now as we recess 
I'm going to offer a short dismissal and we will strip our altar as the final Taze chant is sung, Stay With Me. So go in peace and may Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen. Chad, Chad.